My name is Marcus Harris. I am a software and intellectual property attorney at a law firm called Taft, Statinius, and Hollister here in Chicago. We're a full-service law firm. I uh, concentrate my practice really in three primary areas. I focus on traditional intellectual property protection uh, strategies and litigation. I also draft and negotiate enterprise software-related license agreements um, and implementation agreements. I also focus on litigating uh, implementation uh, failures. My leadership style really has had to have substantive changes as I've progressed in my career. I think, you know, initially you're not really concerned necessarily with being a leader, but as you progress, I think you know, your job as certainly a partner in a law firm or just a leader in an organization in general is you've got to certainly lead by example and I think you've got to in some ways lead from behind. I mean you've got to inspire people to do better. You've got to give them the environment to be able to reach their goals and, and be the kind of person and kind of professional that they want to be. So I think you've, you've got to keep those things in focus when you're trying to be a leader. Well really for me it's all about you know generating additional business in new and exciting technology focused legal areas. So like I said, I mean, I think there's just so much opportunity in the technology space right now. Things are so cutting edge, whether it's you know, traditional apps, cloud computing, GDPR, data privacy issues. You know, it's just exciting to be able to see these things come up on the forefront and then try to adapt your practice um, to be able to address those legal issues and to protect the interests of your client. You know, as a leader, I have to make unpopular decisions all the time and some of the most unpopular decisions that I make are really deciding you know what team members maybe maybe aren't up to snuff and we need to uh, no longer have on our team I think those are some of the most difficult decisions that you make you want to give people the opportunity to to grow in their profession um, and really show you know, what they've got but at the same time you've got a business to look out for and you've also got other professionals in your organization to protect to some extent and I think if you've got somebody that's really not performing you've got to make a decision on how you're going to let them go, do it with compassion, and do it in a way so that it doesn't impact morale and the way that these other people in your organization you know, perceive their job and their future opportunities. As a technology lawyer, I'm developing innovative, innovative solutions to non-traditional problems on a daily basis. I think that's just what I do, that's the space I live in, and that's the space that I'm comfortable in. You know, you're dealing with technology issues that just didn't exist three, five, seven years ago, and you've got to figure out how your existing methodologies from a legal perspective adapt to those technological advances and how you can protect your client using existing laws. It's a very competitive environment, especially in law. You know, firms, top firms are always competing salary-wise for top candidates, and I think sometimes you've got to look beyond just financial rewards, and I think you've got to look, you know, as, as a candidate, you've got to look to what that firm provides to you from a, go, a growth perspective. But as someone in an organization that makes those decisions, I mean, you're really looking to some extent for people that are well-rounded, hidden gems, if you will, that not only have you know the base level competency to do the job, but also bring something extra to that job. You want somebody certainly that's a go-getter. You need to have somebody with you know, a personality that really is is suited to that particular type of job. And I mean, if you can find those people, I think those are the kinds of people that you want to hold on to.